Hello and welcome to the group room where we're at the 34th annual CTRC AACR San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. I'm very happy now to be joined by Professor Dr. Jose Basalga, the Division of Hematology, Oncology, and Associate Director of the Massachusetts General Hospital Cancer Center in Boston. You are also a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. And you are the star at this uh, San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. You've got some very exciting data to talk about. I'm going to ask you, though, to define something for us, because both of these studies uh, refer to progression-free survival. And perhaps we can start with a simple explanation of what does progression-free survival mean? Yeah. So it's not easy. Okay. So I'll try to explain it. It's a very important goal. And it's perhaps the most important goal in all our trials in patients with metastatic disease. Progression-free survival is the time that the tumor is under control, that the tumor does not grow when you start a new therapy. You see, in metastatic disease, what we want to do is to um, have patients alive for as long as we can and have the disease as chronic as we can. And the measurement on for how long the tumor stops growing is a very important one. And this basically sometimes means that the tumor gets smaller and remains smaller, and that's fantastic. But in many other situations, the tumor may not get smaller, but stops growing. And that's also a success. So the combination of the two things, uh, the time that the tumors stop growing, is what we call progression-free survival. Would it be fair to say that could be a dormant stage of the cancer cell? Absolutely, that's a nice way to put it. So we basically, we put the tumor to rest, and that's the time that the tumor is inactive, uh, so to speak, that does not grow. What, what defines the tumor is its capacity of growing. So if you can interfere with that, if you can provide a therapy that makes the tumor from, from stop growing, that is what progression-free survival means. And the length of time of this progression-free survival period on these studies is significant. Absolutely. Let's start with the Cleopatra study. So Cleopatra, uh, in patients with advanced metastatic HER2 positive breast cancer, that's 20% of our breast cancer patients have HER2 amplification. We made a huge um, discovery 10 years ago with Herceptin. So Herceptin was a game changer. Herceptin provided improved progression free survival and survival in, in these patients. But Herceptin in the advanced setting does not cure anybody. So even patients that respond eventually uh, do progress and eventually will need more therapy. There is a new antibody called pertuzumab that binds to HER2, to the HER2 receptor, in the same way as Herceptin does, but is working through a different mechanism. This antibody prevents activation of the receptor by another way. And we had done some studies, uh, earlier studies, smaller studies, showing that patients that had failed Herceptin, when we added pertuzumab, this new antibody, when you combine the two of them, you have better anti-tumor response. So um, the tumors get smaller, and the two of them appear to be more active. And we did a small study in patients with advanced disease that we showed that. The idea here is let's be really bold. Let's do a study in the first-line setting in patients that had not received chemotherapy for metastatic disease before, in patients that have not received Herceptin in the advanced disease setting, and let's see if pertuzumab can add. To, this was a large study, was a randomized phase three study, placebo control, registration study, 800 women, and patients were randomized to receive the conventional therapy, that's Herceptin with Tocetaxel, also known as Taxotere, so people know Taxotere, so it's Herceptin and Taxotere, plus placebo. And then the other half of the patients were given the new drug, Pertuzumab, plus Herceptin, plus Taxotere. And our primary endpoint was progression-free survival. And what we observed Gemma, is something that we have never seen. The increase in progression-free survival is half a year, which is huge. So we went from 12 months to 18 months. To put this in perspective, this is the most positive study in the history of metastatic breast cancer. Never, never ever 
have we seen a benefit of this magnitude? And it gets better. The side effects are very minimal. And it's way too early to look at survival, because to look at survival, we need to follow patients for a number of years, thank God. But we had an interim look at survival, and the trend is very, very strong. Dr. Basalda, how long did it take for you to get the first interim results back where you could see um, the in the positive, I mean, outcome of the progression-free survival. 19.3 months, and I can't even tell you the hours and the minutes, uh, because we were monitoring very carefully um, how the patients were doing. And the study had a predefined number of events. You know, you, you need, you know, when you see the events, right? So that one, that, that's what it took us to, 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 to reach to the moment in which it was very clear that the effects were so superior that we had to look at the study. And it was exciting too that the cardiotoxicity was not an issue and that your, this, the uh, toxicity overall was limited. Well, there was no, not a signal, not a sight, nothing of cardiotoxicity. So the only side effects that we saw that increased a little bit was diarrhea. Mm -hmm. And also, um, some patients had fever, uh, low blood counts and fever, more so in the protosubal arm. However, docetaxel was given in most patients only for six cycles. And that was when you see most of the side effects. But after that, after six cycles, then we just go on with the antibodies, with the two antibodies. And then the side effects are basically non-existent. So you could conceive and you could see patients that have been on this for over a year in which the only side effect that they have, literally, is to have to go to the hospital once every three weeks to get an infusion and then go back to work or go back home. So uh, the side effect profile is extremely, extremely uh, favorable. Once the arm with the doxytaxel was completed, how long are patients, did they or are they remaining on the other? Yeah, that's a very important question. So uh, patients that continue to derive benefit they stay on uh, with the therapy with Herceptin and Pritusumab for as long as they continue to, to have benefit from therapy. And how do you monitor the patients? That's a very important issue. We monitor these patients very carefully. And so every six weeks, uh, we uh, perform in this study a complete study assessment. So we looked every six weeks at the lesions that we know uh, are present and we check them, see if they're better, they're worse, they are the same. This is done from what, what kind of imaging do you use? So it depends, but in most cases we're talking about uh, CAT scans and MRI. So it, it depends a lot uh, on where the lesion is. It depends a lot on the site uh, where the study is being conducted. So this was, I forgot to mention, that's a global study. So it was done around the world. So in some countries you use more CT scan, in others MRI seems to be more dominant. So, but I think what's important is for every patient, you got to be consistent. So whatever you choose to follow with, that's what you do. What does this mean now for the standard of care? Well, this represents no question in my mind, a new standard of care. Again, this is the most positive data we've ever had, ever, in the history of breast cancer. So this ought to be, in my mind, clearly the new standard of care in the first-line setting. And I think the fact that it is a first-line treatment is also what makes it terribly exciting. Absolutely. But we have even better plans than that. We are moving very rapidly into the adjuvant setting. So as of today, we have already three patients, three, not too many, enrolled in the adjuvant study. So we have launched a major worldwide study in which pertuzumab now is being studied after surgery. In the adjuvant setting, that would, that, would, that would be so monumental. It's going to be. Thank you so much. I mean, you're the uh, lead investigator on all of this for, uh, for taking the time, one, at such a busy San Antonio meeting to come and even talk to us, but the sense of, of, of pride and just your passion and, and, and happiness must be quite overwhelming for you right now. I think it's, it's I mean, this has been the work of, of the community. I mean, there's been so many people working on this, and these trials, I mean, they've been so global. I mean, thousands of women from around the world. It's, it's really a, a global effort, so it's, it's a very good time, I think, for for all of us to celebrate this. 
Well, your reputation is, is wide and vast. You're a pretty famous guy, and you know, I've, I, it's been a real privilege working with you, former president of, of, of ESMO, and you're just one of these nonstop oncology researchers, and it's a real privilege to know you. Thank you. Professor Dr. Jose Basalga, Chief of the Division of Hematology, Oncology, Associate Director of the Massachusetts General Hospital Cancer Center in Boston, where you're also the Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School, and I know they must miss you a lot in Europe. Yeah, I miss them too, <laughs> but I go, I go very frequently. I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sure. Professor Basalga. Thank you.